Suppose we have a population with a binary categorical va variable. As an example, suppose the population that we're interested in is all the people in the world. And the variable that we're interested in is if, the, if individuals are left-handed or not. So as we look at each of the individuals in the population, the thing that varies from one to another is whether they're left-handed or not. The parameter of interest, then, is the proportion of the population who are left-handed. There's a couple things that we could do right off. We could take a sample, maybe of size n, and get the point estimate for the parameter. That is, we could find the proportion of the sample that are left-handed. That point estimate is found by counting the number of successes, that is, the number of, of the n people who are left-handed, and dividing that by n. So that gives us the proportion of the, uh, the sample. In Module 5, we learned about binomial probability distributions. In that case, we knew the probability or the proportion of the population that uh, satisfied a particular category. And we were looking at n Bernoulli trials. We could then calculate the probability of any particular number of successes. I'm going to represent the probability of successes with a, a little line. Probability of n. So we'd get this probability distribution if we knew the proportion and we knew how many trials we were making. Now this probability distribution had a mean. We knew how to find that mean. It was going to be n times the probability of success in an individual Bernoulli trial. We also know that this probability distribution has a standard deviation which is going to be the square root of n times p times q, where q is the probability of failure, and, or in other words, it's 1 minus p. Now, if we take a sample from this probability distribution of size n, and we find that we have r successes, then we can calculate the, the uh, proportion of successes that we have in that particular sample simply by taking r divided by n. Then if we considered every possible sample of size n from this probability distribution, calculated the p hat associated with each one of those, we would get a, a distribution of p hats. This distribution will also have a mean and a standard deviation. I'll call the mean of this probability distribution mu sub p hat. And the standard deviation of this probability distribution as sigma sub p hat. The wonderful thing is the mean of this probability distribution will be this p, this original parameter that we're interested in finding. And the standard deviation of this distribution of sample proportions is the square root of p times q divided by n. So I've put three marks on this uh, on this number line showing where I where I'm going to say that the mean is and where one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. A wonderful thing is that if certain uh, assumptions are satisfied, we can pretty much guarantee that this distribution of sample proportions is going to be normally distributed. Those assumptions are that n times p, the number of successes in this uh, probability distribution is greater than 10, and the number of, of failures in the overall population is also greater than 10. So we can produce a fairly accurate graph of this uh, normal distribution because we know that within one standard deviation, the graph is concave down, and outside of that, it's concave up. Now, the p hat that we got from our one sample ends up somewhere on this number line. We can usually assume that it's going to be a reasonable point estimate, but it's not going to be exactly what this p is. But it, but it could have been anywhere on this number line. Since this is a normal distribution, we can convert everything and measure them in standard deviations by converting these values to z, 
to z score. The z distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. It's a normal distribution. So since it's a normal distribution, we can easily draw a reasonable graph of it. Okay, so any value up here can be converted to a z-score. It's done easily. You take the value that you're trying to convert to a z-score minus the mean of this distribution, which in this case is going to be p, divided by the standard deviation of this distribution. Now, for our convenience, we're going to always call the standard deviation of this distribution of sample means a standard error, S-E, uh, because we've got a standard deviation here and here and here. So it's going to be nice to, to be able to say this special one in this distribution we're going to call a standard error. So that's just converting this P hat to a, to a Z-score. And this is the three distribution diagram for a proportion.